guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. And as some of you know on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Moonlight Castle, Dylan's Path. That's right, y'all, we're jumping right back into Dylan's Path anyway. I'll save the Patreon stuff to the end of the video. Anyway, Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Page 2, very 17, 17, yeah, there we go. Okay. <clears throat> I think this is it. Yeah, this is it. All right, let's do it, y'all. Okay. In a way, the tiger reminded me of what Liam would be if he knew how to control himself. Fair. Blake unlocked his phone and showed us some pictures from his gallery. Did you draw these? I was surprised. It looked like he was well-versed in many different techniques, and his style varied greatly in each of the pictures. I draw in my free time, yes. Wow, you never told us that. I tend to avoid mentioning it, because every time someone finds out, they ask me if I can draw them, and it drives me insane. Patrice furrowed his brows at the wolf's response. Oh, that's... bad? It's not, but it's awkward. It's a question that I get constantly, and if you heard it all the time, you'd be annoyed too. Oh, I didn't know. Sorry. Don't apologize. You didn't ask. Nobody here did. I never asked for a drawing of myself. I look awful in pictures. Even the camera hates me. He's exaggerating. Don't listen to him. He's fine. Have you ever thought of making art your career? Nah, this is just a hobby. There's something else I want to do, way more than this, and it's to become a lawyer. I'd hate to practice law and defend a criminal in court, no matter how much they paid me. I can choose my clients, you know. What you mentioned is a possibility, but I'm not interested in that. As a small reminder for the future, I don't recommend bringing Ryan to court with you. What do you mean? Explain! I chuckled and Blake carried on in my place, knowing exactly where I was going. Oh, oh, you're right. Maybe he will, <laughs> however, maybe in the future he'll change, so we should give him the benefit of the doubt for now. Hey, hey! <clears throat> Hey, hey, hey! I, you think I can stay quiet during this during a hearing? You think I can't stay quiet during a hearing? You guys must be kidding me! I apologize in advance, Ryan, but you're quite the extroverted fellow. You seem to talk with everyone, butt in on people's problems, and tend to forget to pay attention to what you're saying until it's too late. Even Russell got you figured out already, and from what I heard, you met this guy less than a week ago. Ryan was sulking on his seat. Everyone was bullying him at this point. Fine, I'll stop talking if it makes you all feel better. Come on now, don't be like that. Ryan, what they said might be true, but nobody said it was a bad thing. I think those are amazing qualities when used correctly, and, you know, they're what makes you my best friend. The bear didn't say stay sad for too long. A single compliment was enough to lift his spirits and bring out a smile. Then he grabbed me by the neck when I least expected it, and he dragged me closer to him. Oh, come here, you softy. Hey, 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 careful, that hurts a little. Russell, you're up, tell us something. The tiger immediately went back to the topic. I have nothing to say. I've been working here since I can remember. Don't give me a cold shoulder to go with that orange juice. Just say something simple so we can get to know you better. We go to the same college. If it's okay, can you tell us what you're studying? It doesn't matter. I'm doing it mostly for him. Who's that? And now I'm even more curious. The tiger stood up and leaned forward so that he was as close to Russell as possible, as if, he would, as if that would convince the bull to speak. Blake tugged his shirt and made him stop. We shouldn't pry. It seems personal. Okay, then. There's one last person I haven't asked. Ryan's favorite, the cute little dog. I knew I was about to be put under the spotlight, and I didn't like it when everyone was staring at me. It was too sudden, too soon. I preferred to deal with only one person at a time. I'm not great at introducing myself. Maybe you can ask me what you want to you know, and I'll answer. Hmm. This would have been the perfect moment if, to ask if you were single. What a shame. Can we forget I'd already done that? Patrice? A real question, yes. How did you and Ryan meet? Let's hear it. Oh, that's easy. We're childhood friends. One day when he was alone, I approached him. We started talking. Things just clicked really fast, and he was super sweet. Immediately, Blake noticed something unusual in that story. Wait a second. You were the one that approached him? I looked away and stumbled over my words. Yeah, I know. That's weird, right? I guess that day I was in the mood. Gently, Ryan placed his paw on my shoulder and calmed me down. He knew better than anyone what I was doing and why I was struggling to talk. Joel, you can tell him the truth. It doesn't bother me. Really? I thought you didn't like, ta like talking about it. That's true, but who cares? I want them to learn more about us, about us, that in return we can learn more about them. Hearing that, hearing that, Blake was barely able to hold himself back from doing a facepalm. Patrice, on the other hand, showed no mercy and laughed out loud. That's not exactly how it works. Oh my god, you're so dumb. That's hilarious. That is exactly why I like you. Dumb bitch energy at its finest. Whatever, don't tell them then. They're so rude. Just like a child, Ryan stuck out his tongue and made me, made me stay quiet out of sheer pettiness. Maybe next time. 
I yawned as I checked the time on my phone while everyone kept talking and messing around. It's getting late. I should go home and study a bit and head to bed. I'd like to get some extra sleep tonight. Good idea. I think I'll do the same. I'll drive you guys home then. If everyone is leaving, then I'll come too. It seemed everyone was in agreement, so we decided to end the night. Good night, everyone. Have a safe drive home. I would have loved to spend more time with them, but the car ride was short. The disadvantage of living close by was by was that I was dropped first. I waved at everyone and wished them a good evening. Maybe I should text them before bed, though I hadn't really decided. I was easily I hadn't really decided yet. I was easily distracted, so I'd rather keep my phone away when I was going through my notes. I climbed the stairs. Living on the second floor wasn't the worst, but I disliked it nonetheless. I spent the rest of the day of my evening studying, lying on my bed and listening to music. Also, I heated up the microwave. Uh, heated up in the microwave a can of soup I got yesterday. It was awful. I thought of the sandwich Ryan gave me during lunch, and I couldn't help wishing that I could have another one right now. Though I'd never ask him, I wasn't a beggar, and I'd never even stoop to that stoop to that level. Eventually, I drifted off while reading a book. I must have been more tired than I'd anticipated. Day two. All right. The blaring alarm jolted me out of my slumber. I reached for the shelf and tried to grab my phone. I'm sure I could squeeze in another five minutes. Feeling the surface of the shelf with my hand, I grumbled as the phone was, wasn't found. The buzz was constantly becoming louder, and it was driving me nuts. I grew impatient, and once I noticed the sound was coming from below me, I forced myself out of bed. The culprit was lying on the floor, facing down, and as much as I wanted those extra five minutes, I was already wide awake. I picked it up, sat myself down, and checked my notifications. There was a pinned message in the group chat regarding tonight. It was mostly about the time, the location, and some other important details. Upon closer inspection, I noticed there was a small list of duties people had assigned to themselves, such as bringing something to the trip or doing something for that night. Realizing that there was neither a role nor a task next to my name, I figured I had to participate in some way. I quickly changed my clothes and headed for the pantry, only to, only to find that I was running low on food, and I couldn't think of anything else that would be a good fit for tonight. I guess I'll have to do grocery shopping today. I sighed, thinking about how stressful that was going to be. I really didn't want to call Mom and ask her for my allowance. The idea alone sent a shiver down my spine. I tapped myself on the face, reminding myself to focus on one problem at a time. I continued to dig around for anything that might be useful for the trip, however it was to no avail. Someone was, already, someone was already doing going to bring drink, bring the drinks, and another was already going to bring the tools. Even the plates were already covered. There's nothing left for me to do. I should have got, I should have paid more attention to the chat so that I could have claimed a role early. Now it felt like I was leeching off my friends again. I covered my face in shame as I groaned at myself. And my phone once again started to sing its despicable tune. So much noise in one morning. Truly, I was a fool to believe there would be peace, even for a moment. Ryan's name was shown on the screen. In addition, I could see the digital clock in the corner, and I was thrown for a loop as soon as I looked at the time. No way! Adrenaline pumped in my bloodstream. I gathered my belongings and rushed outside as fast as I could. I kept an eye on the clock as I didn't want to miss the class or my breakfast. Admittedly, I was worried about the latter, though. Ryan was waiting for me. He popped his head out of the car as soon as he saw me, and then he greeted me with a giggle. Someone is late. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I hopped in the car, and... After pulling the door closed, I took a deep breath. All that running did all that running did me good. I didn't mean to rush you, I was just wondering where you were. I don't think anybody cares if we're late. Ryan turned on the engine and started driving. Meanwhile, I continued to try to catch my breath. I don't like to make people wait, but I don't mind waiting for you. I thought I was ready to return any excuse he could throw at me. However, I apparently wasn't ready for this one. Although it appeared Ryan was focused on driving, I still caught him occasionally staring at me. Each time our eyes met, he'd immediately turn his, way, turn his away, pretending to be looking at the road. If waiting doesn't bother you, then I suppose I can try to relax. Of course you can. Ryan was responding in a mumble. Maybe he didn't expect me to answer like that. There's plenty of time to spare. Sure. Thanks. It was just a little wait, Joel. We're enough for friends. No need to thank me for that. It became awkward for a second, though not in a bad way. Strangely enough, I could feel a pleasant warmth in my chest. Uh, can I have your suggestion on something? You don't have to ask. Far away. I gave him a summary of the concerns I was having this morning and why I was late. Just bring yourself to the party. That's the best contribution yet. You really think I'll, you really think I'll take that as an answer? Well, I tried. I need an idea. Everyone is bringing something, even Dylan. I know, right? It's really cool that he's borrowing his father's grill. Borrowing? You mean smuggling? Oh, I'm sure he asked for permission. I gave Ryan a stare. On second thought, maybe he didn't. 
We shared a laugh at the thought of Dylan swiping a girl for the night. Anyway, we're getting off track. I want to do something for everyone, but there's nothing left to be done. Ryan took a moment to give me to give it a thought. There were a few instances of him of him stopping himself right before he'd speak, but after a while, he finally suggested something. I think Russell is planning to make a cake. If you can't bring your, something yourself, maybe you can try assisting others in bringing theirs. Oh my god, that's a brilliant idea. I'll ask him. We chatted until Russell's shop was in sight. I grabbed my things and walked out with Ryan in tow. The place looked just as dead as it was yesterday, but Russell told us the business was fine, so I didn't bother thinking too much about it. Good morning. I'll start by making breakfast right away. Ryan and I sat at our usual spots, and I watched Russell do his things. The bull moved fast, and he didn't need to look at where the ingredients were before he comfortably grabbed them. I wondered how long he'd been doing his job to develop such muscle memory. Ryan told me you're bringing a cake for tonight. That's correct, and I already finished making it. Disappointed, I hit, I hit my head on the counter. There wasn't even an opportunity for me to ask him. What's the problem? Ryan told Russell about it. I thought we agreed on not letting Joel bring anything. I know. <clears throat> I know. He's just being a stubborn dog. I refuse to come tonight with an empty hand, all right? After checking on the food that was being cooked, Russell turned to face us while cleaning his hands with a towel. I have a proposal. If you could help me with a certain thing, I might be even, it might be even better than bringing an item to the party. My eyes were filled with sparkles upon hearing those words. Yes, yes, I'll do it. I haven't said what it is yet. Well, I'm sure it's nothing difficult. Go ahead and say it. Yesterday, Blake, assist Blake asked me to assist Clyde making a dessert for tonight. Is he trying? At is she trying to find a hobby for that guy? No clue. I wasn't paying attention to what they were saying. But d didn't you already make a cake? I did. Mm, it's a backup. What does that mean? I think it's meant to replace Clyde's dessert if it turns out to be bad. Oh, is this supposed to be a secret? By that, if you mean not telling Clyde, then I suppose it is. This feels wrong. That's why I'm asking you to join him in making the dessert so that there are more chances of him succeeding. He refused my direct assistance because I'm experienced, but I think he's going to let you help him. I guess that makes sense. How much do you know about cooking? The image of me microwaving soup last night was flashing before my eyes, and I didn't think that Russell would be thrilled to hear such a story. Not much. Perfect. Russell handed us our breakfast. The irresistible smell promptly made me forget about Clyde and all his cake business. It didn't take long for Russell and for, Russ, uh, for Ryan and me to finish the food. That was delicious! I want to eat this again tomorrow! Am I going to become addicted to your cooking? You're spoiling me! That means I'm doing my job properly. I exhaled at the end of my feast. This dog was happy to was happy and more than ready to start the day. That's the kind of sound I like to hear. Now that the bear had said that, this dog had become less happy and more embarrassed. Shut up. I thanked Russell for the food. You two should hurry. You aren't you aren't as early as yesterday. It was easy for him to say that when he wasn't the one who needed to get up with a full stomach, and I was just about to feel really comfortable in the seat in the seat too. I hate to rush while digesting, and I was enjoying the process of figuring out my plan for the day. Yeah, you're right. We should go. We should get going, but I can't move. Fear not. I'll just carry you to the car myself. I jumped up from my chair, and there was no way I was going to let him carry me like a baby. What did you... No, absolutely not. No worries. You aren't heavy. I've carried groceries bigger than you. How should I feel to be compared with a bag of groceries? And how much did he, food did he... How much food did he buy? I appreciate the intent, but I can walk on my own. Thanks. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm gonna give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank y'all for all I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Anyway, if y'all wanna get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye!